It's not one to mess around with. God is not a God to be played with. He loves us. He loved us. That's what the scripture continually reminds us. God loved us. God loved us. Give me Isaiah 43, 3 and 4. Isaiah 43, 3 and 4. All right, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, 3 through verse 4. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of who? Of Israel. No, the Malachites. Of Israel. No, the Jebusites. Of Israel. No, the Elamites. Of Israel. The Edomites. Of Israel. Read. The Savior I gave, I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. And I have what thee? I have loved thee. Read. Therefore will I give thee, therefore I will give men for thee. So the Most High is letting us know he's going to give us possessions of men and women. Oh, he's going to give us possessions. Just like the nations took us as possessions and kept us as slaves even unto this day. Oh, you're going into captivity. You really are. And if you, brothers and sisters, want to hang around the oppressor, then the same going to happen to you. But you may not be going into captivity. The Lord just going to disappear you. Just make that fire much more greater. Finish that out. And people for thy life. So he's letting us know. He's going to give us men for thee and people for our lives. Oh, yeah. We working now. We built up every nation we've ever been in. But the time going to come when you're going to build our nation. And it ain't going to be easy. Because the true righteous people know how to build a nation. And they like it straight and right. Where you got it now is crooked and nasty. It's going to be straight and right and righteous. It's going to be according to our Father. And how he created the world is perfect in all its ways. His children going to be perfect in all their ways. And you're going to follow according to to his will. Give me that Ma uh, Malachi 1, 2, and 3. The time is coming to an end for all this BS, basic silliness, just in case somebody took it the wrong way. We're getting rid of the basic silliness of foolishness, and we're going to do what thus saith the Lord according to his word. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 2 through 3. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? And was not Esau Jacob's brother? So clearly, the Lord says, I loved you. He's talking about Jacob. He's talking about the children of Israel. But he hated Esau. Yet I loved Jacob. Read. Saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. So the Lord is letting us know he loved us. But yes, he does hate someone. Yes, God does hate. I can care less if you like it or not. God loves Israel. He hates Esau. Chew on it. Think about it. It's no joke. Let's hear that again in Romans 9 and 13. Yeah, I got a precept for uh, the coons. You want to get it now? Uh, Yeah. So this, this scripture is talking about our people who want to hold Esau's hand, want Esau to be saved along with them. So these are your so-called coons. Can't break that, that, that ties that God loves the nation of Israel. It still had that doctrine of God love everybody. Mm -hmm. Give me Isaiah chapter uh, 13 and verse, uh, go, go to uh, 13 to 13. This is talking about our people. All right, this is the book of Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 13. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place. So this is talking about the great destruction. He's going to shake the heavens and the earth. Everything is going to be moved out of their place. Read. In the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of the fierce anger. So, so he said the wrath. Wrath meaning this is a, a, a angry God. That's this right. God is angry. 
Yes, he is. Read. And it shall be as the chaste roe, and as the sheep that no man taketh up, they shall they shall every man turn unto turn to his own people. So everybody is going to turn to their own people. That's right. But this this one particular people, some of these people is not going to turn to their own people. Read. And flee every one into his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through. And every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. So all these Israelites who's not repentant but want to join hand in hand with the with the so-called other nation, the Gentile, uh, read that last part. Every uh, that is joined. And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. So a lot of our people going to be going to get that sword when Christ come back That's because right. they don't know how to separate themselves from the other nations who oppress them, who put us into captivity. That's right. So that's all I got on that. All praises, all praises. You nine and thirteen, Romans nine and thirteen. Alright, this is the book of Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So clearly the scripture goes back and say it again. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. So when most people hear that, they say, but, 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 but I have a scripture. I have a scripture. I got one. I got one. John 3, 16. This should cover everything. Give me John 3, 16. Because right there, that's it. It's all I got to give you. That scripture right there. Let's get an understanding. All right, this is the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Read. For God so loved the world. God so who the world? For God so loved the world. What, what is that world? Spell loved. L-O-V-E-D. So God so loved we read that all in, the, all in the scriptures we just read. God loved, meaning past tense. Now we got to understand, what does this scripture say? Read the whole verse. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now let's get an understanding. What is this y'all talking about? It says, God so loved the world. Give me Isaiah 45 and 17. If we're going to get an understanding, we're going to get a breakdown on this today. You sitting here quoting the scripture saying God loves all the nations. God loves everybody. God came for everybody. Everybody going to get saved. Really? Let's find out what the scripture says. All right. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So who shall be saved? But Israel shall be saved. Wait, 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 wait. The other nations. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Okay, that but you know that's the Old Testament. Alright. Give me Luke chapter one and six chapter one and sixty eight. Luke chapter one and sixty eight, because it it God changed. It, it changed. It didn't change. God didn't stay the same. He's not the angry God as before. Jesus came. You know, the guy with the long stringy hair and, and the toga robe with no fringes. He came. Hmm. Read 68. This is the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God with, of Israel. Of who? Of Israel. Wait a minute. That must be the whole wide world. Of Israel. Read. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. Wait a minute. His people is not talking about that. That there must be all the other nations, right? No. Of his people, redeem his people. Blessed be the Lord thy God of Israel. Israel. Read 69. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for um. For us in the house of his servant David. So he's using a possessive word when he says us. Who's the us? Israel. A horn is a leader. Who's the horn? He's known in the world today as Jesus, Yahushua, 
Yeshua, all those names is the son of God. But he only came for one people. Read. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that he that we should be that saved who? from that we should so be who saved. Who is the we that they're talking about? Who needs salvation? Who's the people that's undesired in this world? Who's the people that's being shot down in the street? Folks that's being hung on, on, on ropes still to this day. Folks that can't find justice, no justice, no peace. Who's the ones that's always living in the hood, killing one another? Who are those people that need to be saved? Read 71 again. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us. You don't think you're being hated? Look at the laws that's, that's, that's been against us since we've been in captivity. This kingdom has always been against us. Read, read uh, um, that's it. Since the world, since all the hand that hated us. Now, let's go back. Let's go to, oh, the, give me, uh, what is it? Joel. Because we need to understand. <clears throat> First, give me Joel 2 and 27. And then we're going to jump down to 32. Joel 2 and 27. Because we need to understand this, this for God so loved the world. See, I'm still stuck on God loving the world. Joel 2 and 27. Let me know when you get there. This is the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. Wait, 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 wait. wait. God is the God of everybody, right? Because he loves everybody, right? Nope. Read that again. I am the Lord your God, and none else. So he's letting us know. He's our God. He's only the God of the Israelites, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read. And my people shall never be ashamed. We should never be ashamed bringing out this truth, letting our children and our brothers and sisters know what thus saith the Lord. And jump down to 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call, call on his, the name of the Lord shall be delivered. So whosoever... so. If we just read that God is the God of Israel and none else, who's the whoever that he's talking about? That's like if your parents put a note on your refrigerator that says, whoever washed these dishes will get $25. Is he talking about the house, five houses down to the same children that don't look like you? Nope. He's talking about the children that live in that house. If you wash these dishes, and oh yeah, that means clean the counters and everything else and sweep the floor. You don't just get to wash dishes and say, I did it all. No, you get to clean the whole kitchen. I had to learn that one. You know, oh, I washed the dishes. No, you got to do all of it. The whole package. So God is telling the whosoever, the whosoever has to deal with Israel. Finish that. Did you finish reading that? Nope. Finish it. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So the remnant whom the Lord shall call, the remnant is of Israel. Let's get some more on, uh, <clears throat> on, on whosoever. Give me uh, Acts 2 and 21. Because they say, well, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord. We just read that. So that scripture was a precept of John three sixteen. So we're looking at Acts 2 and 21. You get it? This Read is the it. book of Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that when that verse alone, you don't understand the context. You say, well, see, God loves everybody. He said, whosoever. Read. Ye men of Israel, hear, that, hear these words. So he's speaking to the men of Israel. He didn't say the men of Edom. He didn't say the men of Elamites. He didn't say the Ishmaelites. He didn't say any other nation other than Israel. Read. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. So God did these things for our purpose, yet we are not choosing to follow his way. <clears throat> Matthew 24 and 9. Matthew, get that. Matthew 24 and 9. 
All right, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 9. Then shall they deliver you, then shall they deliver you up to be uh, afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So the whosoever goes into, when we start teaching and preaching and doing what thus saith the Lord, this is how they're going to treat us. This is what they're going to do to us. Because we chose not to keep the philosophies of Babylon. The philosophies of Babylon, if you are asleep, is all over the face of the earth. And we don't choose that. Then it says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And they shall be, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Heck, the Lord already told us, gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. You should not be lost on the fact that you already hate it. They already hate you. Oh, but you can kill the tent. You may kill my body, but guess what? You can't touch my spirit. Because when I come back with the Father, he's going to set it right. And he's going to set us free or let us loose on you. And I look forward to that day. So it doesn't matter whether you send me up to be afflicted or you kill the flesh. Trust me, I'm coming back with the Son. So he can set it straight and I'm going to be right with him. And I'll be glad to render his justice and his judgment. So you do what you do and I'll do what I do. Let's get some more on that. Give me that Acts in 13, 26. Because it gets tiring when you hear people continually, your own people first and foremost, believing the lies that our oppressor has given us. You're drinking the wine of this, of this land and you're not keeping what God has given you according to his word. I'm not giving you my words. I'm giving you what thus saith the Lord. Read 13, 26. This is the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 26. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. So the whosoever that we're talking about here is the stock of Abraham, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we're understanding who's the whosoever. So the scripture says, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, we understand who the world is, the world of Israel, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, we just understood the whosoever, and it says believe it. Now, what does it mean to believe? Give me that in Sirach 32 and 24. Because clearly there must be something. I mean, I believe with all my heart. Let's find out. Do you really believe or do you just talk and talk? Sirach 32 and 24. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 32, verse 24. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandment. So if you believe God, then you keep in commandments. That means, sisters, you got your head covered when the word coming out and you're wearing fringes in the border blue and keep all the high holy days. I mean, brothers, you got a beard on your face. You're not covering your head. You're keeping all the high holy days and you loving your wife as Christ loved the church. And sisters, that means you're keeping yourself uh, 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 sap, what is the word? Celibate. You, you should not be out sleeping around. Oh, that goes for you too, brothers. There's no excuse for you. You shouldn't be sleep whore and my sisters shouldn't be whores. We should be keeping the commandments righteously. Now read that from the top again. And he that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandment. And he that trusteth in him shall fare never the, le um, shall fare never the worse. So nothing worse is going to happen to you. Yeah, you're going to have the struggles that we all go through, according to, Rock, to, according to Sirach 2 and 1, and James 1, 4, 2 and 4. You're going to have that. You can't get away from that. That's part of life. But if you're going out doing this thing that you're not supposed to, God's going to deal with you. And I'm going to laugh at you, and so will he. He's going to laugh in your calamity because you're doing what he told you not to do. You think this is a joke. You think this is a game. Game time is over. It's time to man up and woman up and do what thus saith the Lord, 
or prepare for the fire because it's going to be hot and it's going to burn. And he's going to laugh at you. It's going to be funny to God because he told you. And yet you chose not to listen. Give me a... Uh, um, it says, shall not perish goes into salvation. So give me that in Psalms 14, 7. Shall not perish goes into salvation. Psalms 14 and 7. All right, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 14, verse 7. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion, when the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice. And Israel shall be glad. So he says, Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. Salvation is coming out of Zion. And he says, When the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. That's us not perishing away. Shall not perish. That's the salvation. See, the scripture says, this is what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. So even though they have killed the flesh, you ain't dying because the spirit of God is on you. And I feel sorry for them. No, I don't. Because judgment's gonna come at them. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. You keep laying your hands on God's people. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Yet put your hard-headed self thinking that you're going to do what you want to do. Okay. Because the Lord is showing up. If you have not noticed, the ground's been shaking. The earth's been quaking. Volcanoes been spewing out. But you think this is all just a game. We don't know. One day a bullet's going to find you. Because no bullet doesn't. Every bullet has a name. And the most high is the one that brings the bullet to justice. In other words, don't play with God. He is not one to play with. This is serious. All right. I'm wrapping this up. <clears throat> Jeremiah 3 and 23. And then we're going to ask the question, what is love? Jeremiah 3 and 23. Jeremiah 3 and 23. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 23. Truly, in vain is salvation hoped for. Uh, let me reread it again. Truly, in vain is salvation hoped for from his hills, from the hills, and from the multitude of mountains. Truly, in the love, in the love, of the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. All praises. It says, truly, in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills. So hope is coming from the hills and from the multitude of mountains truly in the Lord. Our God is the salvation of Israel. So when you start hearing that scripture for John, John 3, 16, you should be able to explain to your brothers and sisters what John 3, 16 mean. If you can't, and I guarantee you what they're telling you. A lies because they don't understand the scripture. And besides, when you read verse uh, John 3 and 1, you'll find out the conversation between the two of them were two Israelites. So it had nothing to do with the whole world. Now let's understand what love is. Give me Jane, give me uh first John 5 and 3. Because we need to find out what lo what is love. You say all day you love God, I love God, we love God, you love God, all God's children love God. Really? Let's find out. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. That you do what? That we keep his commandments. So you got to keep commandments. And what else? And his commandments are not grievous. And his commandments are not grievous. God is not commanding us to do anything that's going to be grievous to us. If we are being grieved, it's not because of his commandments. It's because some man is telling you to do something he ain't telling you to do. The Sabbath is a day of rest. It's a holy convocation. If you're not resting on the holy and having a holy convocation, somebody's lying to you and you need to get yourself straight. The Most High didn't put burdens on us. If somebody tells you you're not going to be able to keep uh, the, the feast days because you got to do something else, somebody's lying to you and you need to get away from them. It is high time to stop listening to wicked fools. Give me 1 John 6. 2 John 6. 
Second John 6. All right, this is the book of Second John, um, chapter 1, verse 6. And this, is, and this is the love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye, shall, ye should walk in it. So clearly, this is what love looked like. Love looked like you keeping his commandments. You're not keeping his commandments according to the Torah, first five books of the Bible, and all in between and around and through. That includes all 80 books of the Bible. You're not doing what he tell you to do? Then you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. If you don't want to do what he wants you to do, what he commands you to do, go ahead. Live your life. Your day is numbered. You don't have tomorrow because he didn't promise you tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to no man. Go ahead, give me uh, John 14, 15. Because what we're talking about right now, we're talking about what is love. What is love? So far, all we've heard in the last two scriptures, love is keeping the commandments. Okay, what did Christ say love is? This is the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. So Christ saying the same thing. If you love me, keep my commandments. Christ did away with commandments. We don't have to do commandments. My pastor said we don't have to do commandments because commandments are done away with. You need to run away from him. But if that's what you chose to live your life after, keep walking after them. Because your days are numbered. This is not a game. This is not a time you sit up and say, well, I'm listening to this crazy man on YouTube or wherever this is being broadcast from. He kind of crazy. My pastor said we ain't have to do that. Do whatever you want. Check out Jeremiah 23 and 1, though. Because that's where you get the wicked pastors. Check out Jeremiah 23 and 1. We ain't going there. We ain't going there. That's for those who think they pass for know everything. Read Jeremiah 23 and 1. For you, go to, um, give me Wisdom of Solomon 618. Because it's, it's playtime is over. There's too much going on in this earth. There's too much trouble, struggle, trials, tribulations, strife, you name it. We're seeing it every single day. It's not a game. Because when that island blew up, I forget the name of the island, where the volcano blew up, it killed every single person on the island. You think God is playing? Keep it up. You said Wisdom of Solomon 3 and... Seven. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 18. <clears throat> This is right. the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 18. And love is the keeping of her law. Love is the what? Keeping of her law. Read. And the giving heed unto her laws is assurance of incorruption. And incorruption maketh us near unto God. That's it. Love is the keeping of her laws. You're not keeping commandments. You're not doing what God tell you to do. Destruction is coming to you. That's simple. It, it doesn't get any simpler. Give me Romans 13 and 10. Because somehow, some way, you have decided to diss God and to follow a man. Because he's got a bunch of paper with dead men on it that can buy you stuff, that can be burned in fire. That fulfills you. But when you die, you have nothing that's going to go with you. All the paper with the dead men on it, you can't take with you. All the silver and all the gold, you can't take with you. You will stand before a holy God. And he'll either say one or two things. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Or depart from me, ye that worketh iniquity. Which one are you going to be? Read. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling of the law. If you don't love your brother, you're not fulfilling the law. Last verse. Last verse. Oh, 11? Sirach 2.15. <laughs> Last verse. Sirach 2.15. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 2, verse 15. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word, and they that love him will keep his ways. So keep his ways. His ways 
are the ways of the commandments. Christ even said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father except through me. So you cannot get to the Father if you're not going to keep commandments because if you're not keeping commands, you can't get to Christ. If you're not getting to Christ, you're going to hell. That's just point blank. It's time to repent and come out of the ways of this world. The Lord is calling his chosen. It ain't enough for me to wake you up. That ain't enough to me at all. I'm just a seed planter. And I plant seeds a little harsh sometimes. The dirt is kind of hard, so you got to beat it to dig it. But that's all we got. Love you all. Shalom. Shalom. Peace and blessings. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't forget to turn that one off too. Okay, this one right here.